Hey everyone, it's Trish. I am back finally just doing a sit down, not a quick tip, just a couple of vlogs here or um, just a couple of videos. The first one I've been meaning to do for quite some time, sorry if the hair is hideous, it is so hot and humid here that I can't even explain. I'm currently in, as of exactly today, my 22nd week of pregnancy. This is my third pregnancy. And I kind of want to do a little backtrack because I've kind of alluded to what I went through with my daughter but never fully explained. So, and in order to kind of explain my situation with her, I kind of have to go back to um, my son, who's three and a half. Um, basically, all along with my pregnancy with him, everything was pretty normal. I had at my... 18th week my very first ultrasound ever and was with him I think it was at 18 weeks he um, had a two vessel cord which they're normally supposed to have three so I was kind of being monitored um, a little bit more closely with that but it wasn't anything seriously serious at that time um, I think about um, so by that monitoring, every four weeks I was just having a sonogram just to kind of monitor everything. Everything else looked um, perfectly normal and fine. And I personally was having a very quote unquote normal pregnancy. Um, then I, um, I can't remember, I it's been so long ago, but I can't remember exactly what um, sonogram, but they noticed that he was um, not not growing a tremendous amount and to give you a little idea I'm five foot tall and roughly a hundred pounds um, so you know I, I never really thought I was going to be having a six seven pound baby anyway but you know that's where they want that's the weight they want you to have a baby or is considered like normal or average so um, I think it was a couple months prior no maybe maybe even more than that they started doing the um gosh i think it's called biophysical if i remember right where they strap you up and they're kind of monitoring uh the baby's heartbeat and everything and those were always fine and i was still having the sonograms and yes he was measuring small but everything other than that was fine and then towards about at eight weeks or so my blood pressure started to rise a little bit and um during my one of my appointments, I think it was two weeks, you know, you start going every two weeks. They weren't overly concerned. They said, you know, your blood pressure is up a little bit, you know, try to get off your feet as much as you can. And being a teacher, especially an elementary teacher, you're on your feet. So um, I did try to take it a little bit, you know, more easy and, and at home, especially really trying to get off my feet, lay down, those type of things. At 34 weeks, um, I had another sonogram and he was measuring below the 10th percentile and at that time my doctor was concerned so basically he said look from directly from that appointment I need you to go watch across the street from where his um, facility was to the hospital that I had planned to deliver and everything and I want you to go immediately from here to there and I was like okay so I call my colleague I'm in tears oh my gosh that I know that was October 30th because the next day was the 31st which was going to be our Halloween party and all these type of things so I was very freaked out basically he didn't say in the exact terms but I was being put on bed rest so he was um, 34 34 weeks or I was at 34 weeks then so I went directly over there got got um, checked into the hospital they had a room waiting for me uh, my husband came home with, you know, I didn't even have a hospital bag packed for delivery, let alone a two week stay. So I am uh, writing down lists, taking pictures of him with my phone, texting him, all this kind of stuff. Don't forget this, don't forget that. So he's coming home. I hadn't really purchased anything that I really would have needed from the store. So um, I kind of recommend people to at least have your things ready and tight in your house because you just never know. Um, so anyway, I spent two weeks from October 31st to November 11th. He was born, 11, 11, 11. So um, they tried to induce me that day at start. Well, actually the night before I was given Cervidil to soften the cervix and kind of get you ready. And the next day they put me on, why can I not think of any words at all? <laughs> the, um, 
Pitocin, yes, which was always like my biggest fear because whenever I've watched a baby story, it's like once they give you the Pitocin, it's like the most horrendous contractions you can ever think of. But anyway, they put me on that and they kept coming in every 15 minutes, turning it up, turning it up, turning it up. They tried to break my water a couple times and it just wasn't happening. So about six or so in the evening, my doctor came back, my OB, and said, hmm, what do you want to do? He's like, here's, you know, here are your options. We can shut this down for today, do Cervidil again over overnight tonight, and you know, repeat this process tomorrow. At that point, I had been in the hospital for two weeks on bed rest. I couldn't, you know, really get up and walk around or anything. And the whole time, the baby was fine um, with the monitoring and everything that was going on. And my blood pressure was, it kind of leveled out a little bit. Um, or, and I said, and that's what I said, or what else? He goes, we could throw in the towel and do a C-section. And at that moment, I was kind of um, scared because, you know, a vaginal delivery to me is scary. A cesarean is scary. I looked, of course, at my husband and said, what do you think? And he's like, it's your choice. I just support your decision, which is really what I wanted to hear. But I guess, you know, I, I was glad that he was saying no, no, you know, not saying no, no, no to the C-section or what have you. Anyway, long story short, I had, once I said yes, probably within about 10 minutes, I was down in the, um, the OR and, uh, he was born at 623, uh, four and a half pounds, um, perfectly healthy. They have the, all, the, all of the NICU people in there. It is a level three NICU hospital, which is one of the reasons that um, I wanted to deliver there. And that's one of the hospitals my doctor delivers at too. So um, they took him straight to the NICU. He was just monitored. He wasn't hooked up to any kind of oxygen or um, temperature kind of thing. He had nothing on him other than he was being monitored there. So um, I actually really didn't get to see him other than when they first held him up until a, probably about four or five the next morning a nurse came i got out of bed um, after having the c-section and being stapled and everything and was wheeled up there and was able to hold him and um then very and then a few hours later he was just taken to the regular nursery and was perfectly fine so anyway let's go to pregnancy number two my daughter charlie you'll probably hear me or you have heard me in the videos talk a lot about hootsie that's our hootie that's what we call her but um so with the next pregnancy, um, right away I was sent for a level two ultrasound just to kind of monitor because of what had happened with my son. And they just wanted to really check everything over. Plus I would, I'm at an older age um, that they want to monitor you a little more closely. So I went for the very first sonogram, I think around 16 weeks or so. Yeah, I want to say that. And right off the bat, the um, sonographer, you know, he's doing his thing and pretty soon he says, I, I feel him kind of shift in his seat and he's kind of being quiet and I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> what is it? So he said, you know, um, brain looks fine. Everything looks fine. He goes, um, this, I'm not seeing two kidneys. I'm seeing one kidney and he's showing, you know, on the screen where, how you can tell because there's a shadow of where those organs are. One's here, one should be here and I'm not seeing it. So he looked several times didn't see it. Everything else looked perfectly fine. He's like, you know, having one kidney is not uh, life threatening. It does um, come with some um, things that you can't do, you know, sports and things like that. You have to be a lot more cautious with certain sports. You can't even play, you know, any contact sports, which I mean, face it today, all sports are contact sports. So, um, and that was that. And we'll see you back in another four weeks. And I, you know, do you have any questions that I asked at this point, you know, it's still, you know, somewhat of an early of a stage. Um, I may, it might have even been before 16 weeks. I can't really remember. And I said, you know, is it possible when we come back from four weeks that you'll see it then? And he said, no. He's like, when these things develop, they develop within a certain time period. And um, no, it won't be there. So we left and I cried <laughs> and um, I felt torn in two different directions. I felt torn that um, I'm, I got pregnant and I'm having a child, which is way more than a lot of people um, ever get to experience or without any, you know, intervening of any sort, you know, completely natural. So on the one part, I'm like, you selfish person, you should not be feeling sad right now. They didn't tell you she had a half, you know, heart or anything like that, which we didn't find out the gender, so they just say the baby, the baby. Um, but on the other hand, from somebody who comes from a, an extremely athletic background, and my husband as well, 
I just don't, I couldn't picture ever telling my child that she couldn't do something. And um, there, there, there would be restrictions um, for her. So anyway, we went to lunch, I cried. Um, it was very upsetting. And that was that. You kind of just, you know, you you have your moment of sadness and then you just get over it. Other than that, I'm having a perfectly healthy baby. I need to, for lack of a better term, suck it up and move on. So at the next um, four week sonogram, uh, also level two, they were going to monitor everything at, at a level two from then on out. And um, yeah, no kidney. Um, or one kidney. I don't want to say no kidney. One kidney, everything else looking perfectly fine. Um, measuring on the small side, but you know, fine. And, um, and then I think the fourth week after that, I actually got to have a 4D ultrasound, which is really cool in color. There's very few of those that were being done, especially at that time. And I think n even now, um, got to see the baby and yeah, they, they were continually looking every time, especially because the regular person comes in and they're, um, doing all the measurements and stuff like that. And then the, the head honcho comes in and for me, it was a male every time he came in and, um, did the same thing looks i mean especially with the one kidney they were really looking everything um over carefully and yeah every i mean i had a ton of sonograms with her and um she was due may 12th and my cesarean was scheduled for no she was due the 15th my cesarean was scheduled for the 9th yes may 9th um and then once again towards the end my blood pressure crept up they, uh, by, before the fourth week, that last fourth week one, they went ahead and said, you know, hey, we probably don't need to see you again for a level two ultrasound. Everything is looking fine. But anyway, my blood pressure was up. So they went ahead and they said, in my regular doctor's office, let's do another sonogram. Just, you know, kind of make sure everything's looking okay. Because my blood pressure had gotten fairly high then. So they, um, they did and they said, ooh, you know, she was, I think she was measuring in the third percentile. So there was like a big drop between in those couple of weeks. So, when was the last time you ate? Um, and I told him, I said, and he basically said, would you like to have this baby tonight or tomorrow morning? Oh, so, oh, I texted my husband, which I had already texted him in the waiting room because I had to wait for the sonogram because I didn't have an appointment to have the sonogram, so I was just waiting until everybody else was finished up. I'm literally sitting in the office and they're like starting to shut off lines and stuff when I'm like, and I texted my husband, I'm out there, I'm like, um, my blood pressure is pretty high, they want to do another sonogram, it's possibly that, it's possible that I will be going to the hospital instead of going home. And he texts me back, okay. <laughs> then when they do that, and he tells me that, um, my doctor, you know, would you like to have her, the baby tonight or tomorrow morning? And he said, well, I'd really like to go home and get my stuff packed. Once again, I did not have my things packed. At least I had everything I needed, but nothing was packed. And I really wanted to see my son. I was having a hard time with him, um, you know, going, going to be the transition. Like, this is the last day that he's ever going to be the only child. This is the last day, because I knew he was having a C-section, that I'm going to um, be putting him in bed and all this kind of stuff. Which he was sleeping in a big boy bed then anyway. But you know what I mean. Be able to pick him up and, you know, give him a hug and all that kind of stuff for a while. So... I text my husband back and said, tonight or tomorrow? And he's like, oh my gosh, call me. <laughs> and so I did. And I said, look, here's the plan. I'm coming home. Um, I need to call my mom, who's about two and a half hours away, and let her know. Um, you know, just kind of get those little last details in order. And it was so funny. My husband came home. And <laughs> or when I got home, he was like, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hang those pictures up in the nursery. That was like his... Like, I've got to do something, I don't know what to do, so I'm going to go hang pictures in the nursery. Which, you know, if you have a baby, they don't sleep really, especially if you're nursing, in the crib in their room for like three months. But anyway, so he called, his mom came over, my mom drove throughout the night, because the next morning I think we had to be at the hospital at 6. And she was actually delivered at like 8 something, so. Um, and she was 5? A little over five pounds so and yeah didn't go to the NICU didn't um, none of that but anyway getting back to the whole two kidney thing so you know I'm in the hospital with her they're, they're monitoring her closely making sure that you know she's having the appropriate amount of wet diapers and all this kind of stuff they take her at one point said you know hey we're going to now that she's out we're going to scan her and see what we see make sure that the the one kidney that she has is you know, good size and good location and all this kind of stuff. So they take her for like 30, 45 minutes 
bring her back. I said, yes, she's, you know, it's the one kidney. Um, it looks fine. It look it looks healthy. It looks at the right location, right size, but, but there is not, you know, just to make sure there isn't the other one there. So, okay. So our child has one kidney. So at this point we did kind of start to share with family. We hadn't really shared before that because I just didn't, I don't know. And there's just something about wanting your child to be perfect, you know, anywho. So you know, we monitor, she come home, she's, she's doing great. She's, she's growing. She's got great output of urine. She's, she's grow, you know, she's meeting all of her milestones. She's gained a ton of weight. She's growing like crazy. She's fantastic. Flash forward to what? Eight months. I think they wanted us to go to a kidney specialist, um, at Children's Mercy at downtown Kansas city. So <clears throat> we did, we went and they want, really were trying to get a urine sample then of course she didn't urinate and when that doctor came in and kind of just pointed on a diagram this is the one she has this is the one she doesn't have blah blah um we will kind of need to monitor she will need to watch her diet you know if she if and when she ever does get pregnant you know no contact sports just kind of gave us the same spiel that the other doctors had and you know it's nice to to be closely monitored and to have that um facility close by and things like that so left they said you know um let's let's check again just to make sure that that <clears throat> the kidney she has is is doing well again let's or that was like it maybe six months yeah come back in a couple months we we want to we want to do a scan on her um to really you know ch check the kidney even more closely and so um all right at that point i was you know, back at school, obviously back at school and everything. So I didn't really feel like I needed to go to the appointment for that. My mother-in-law was going, his mom was going with him. So they go to the appointment and I text him and I said, you know, how'd the appointment go? Or was it through email? I can't remember. But anyway, I'm, I'm right before I go to lunch. No one at, at school, I hadn't told any colleagues about, about this. I wasn't putting it on Facebook. It just was kind of more like our private situation. But um, right before I'm about to go to lunch, I get an, a text email, can't remember which one, back. And it says, strangest <laughs> of things and miracles has happened. Hootie has two kidneys in the right location and of good size. And I'm like, so I, like, I read it like three different times. I'm like, excuse me? Um, did they scan the right? I, I think I messaged back. Oh my gosh, did they, did they scan the right kid? And he's like, yes, I was holding her hand when, when they were doing it. So I'm like, so at this point, like, I, I like need to share. So I find like my best friend there who I, you know, your best friend, why do you not share this with? I, I'm just kind of very, very private, especially about that kind of thing. And I'm like, come into this closet with me. And I'm like, okay, quick update. Charlie was supposed to be born, was born with one kidney, but now she has two long story short. They've, they've, they found this kidney, you know, and it's just so weird because it's, I mean, both kidneys are in the right location. They're the right size. They function perfectly. We did have to go back a little bit later for a dye test to kind of uh, make sure there was no reflux with, <clears throat> with that one or either kidney actually. And yes. So, I mean, it's so miraculous. I mean, I guess I can't think of another word for it that, she, I mean, I had to have had 12 sonograms. They scanned her after birth and did not see it. Can't explain, which is really funny because I just had my 20 week um, level two ultrasound with this baby and the sonographer, you know, it's the same exact place. The sonographer came in and said, so, well, cause before that we, you meet with a genetic counselor and they kind of go through some different testing and of your age and what's your, um, percentage or likelihood of having a baby with down syndrome, et cetera, et cetera. And then, so during that time I said, I don't know if this is in my file at all. I don't, I can't imagine that it would be, you know, cause to call an update and all this kind of stuff. So I said, man, my daughter, da, da, da. So he walks in, he goes, so I'm the first one that missed the kidney. He goes, you must have some amazing breast milk. And I said, yes, I've offered to sell it on Craigslist because my breast milk grows missing human organs, <laughs> apparently. It's just, there is nothing that can be explained from it. So um, my takeaway from this is that, you know, obviously we were prayerful and hopeful, but then there's also that scientific part of you that's like, it's, 
it's not there. You know, when I, when I'm praying, God, please let her grow another kidney. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't that kind of prayer. It was just, you know, keep, keep her healthy, keep her, keep everything going well. It was like that kind of thing. So, I mean, there's no explanation. And I mean, I had other sonographers at the level two place too. It wasn't always the same one. And then to have, you know, scanned her at the hospital, it's because people were like, oh, well, it was just because of the way she was laying. Okay, she wasn't laying the exact same way and not moving around inside there at every sonogram that while she was inside and she she was outside and they scanned her front and back, side to side. I mean, I don't know. There's, I mean, that it's just a miracle. There's no explanation. So this is the tale of two kidneys. Oh, and just to let you know, and I'm going to do this in the next video because I know this is getting long, but, um, oh, Actually, I'm going to hold you in suspense. So I will let you know um, what the deal is with this kiddo because isn't there always something with me and children or us and children, I should say. So anyway, I know this is a super long video, but it's just, I don't know, something I wanted to share so that when I was talking in other videos about well, she has one, she had one and now she has two, people weren't, you know confused by that. Anyway, um, share your interesting sonogram stories down below if you have them or other um, miraculous things that happened that you were like, oh my gosh, and turned out completely different down below. Um, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thumbs up. And as always, take care.